Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering your questions. If you have a question, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I will do my very best to answer your questions. Keep in mind, we receive now in excess of a 1,000 questions a week, and it's just impossible to answer them all. So please, I'm so sorry for those of you that have written me over and over and over and never seem to get yours answered. Truly, truly, it is simply like the lottery. It is simply luck of the draw. Um, because we get page after page of these questions, a lot of times the folks that go through them for me, they sometimes just have to delete entire pages at a time because it's just impossible to read them all. So I am so sorry for so many of you that have had uh, so much patience in writing. All right, let's get into it. Matt from Cookville, Tennessee says, who would win in a fight between Megalodon and Leviathan uh, Melvilli? I'm thinking Megalodon. Well, Leviathan is the new species of giant whale. And normally in these questions about anything fighting a megalodon, my answer is always pretty standard. I believe the shark would be too much to handle, but this has got to be the first time that my opinion may change. You look at the size of the teeth of that whale, my gosh, they are gigantic. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Jurassic Fight Club, I had a megalodon fighting a, a pod of brigmophysetters, which are also whales, but they weren't as massive, I don't think, as this new guy, and they didn't seem to have the same size teeth. And teeth make a big difference because it simply allows you to bite and inflict a much greater wound the bigger the teeth you have. Um, in this particular case, again, the problem is that whales have the disadvantage of always having to go up and get oxygen, and the shark doesn't have that. So it would be a tough call. I would say that, in my opinion, in this particular case, if that whale were to ever get a hold of the shark, then I think that then I think it could go the other way. I think the whale may certainly be able to beat him, but I just can't say for certain. That's a tough one. Okay, Robert from Norkopping, Sweden. Hey, George, hope you feel well. I do, Robert, and thank you very much, buddy. I hope you are doing well as well as your family and friends over in Sweden. Which one would win a fight between a Tyrannosaurus and an Albilosaurus? Tell me why. Well, the reason why, well, first of all, it's Tyrannosaurus, clearly, and I'll tell you why, uh, Robert because abelosauruses were relatively primitive like dinosaurs, meaning they were sort of the early model, models. Their hands were the smallest of any, or their arms and hands were the smallest of any dinosaur on the planet comparative to body size. So the arms are completely and absolutely useless. Now that doesn't mean tyrannosauruses were, uh, would give him an advantage. The arms had nothing to do with this. It has to do with brain capacity, the ability to kind of think, if that's the right term to use, use. and of course it has to do with how quick you are and, and uh, how well balanced you are. And from what I've seen, to me, it seems like abelosauruses were just too primitive and didn't have those same advantages. So I think, take away the fact that Tyrannosaurus was gigantic, uh, he's still a much more uh, advanced dinosaur and I think he would clearly win. All right, Alex from Greensboro, North, uh, North Carolina. Uh, Greensboro. Hey, Dinosaur George, I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you, buddy. That's very kind of you. He says, what, what was your favorite sauropod and what was your favorite Ice Age mammal? Hope you're doing good and thanks. Well, Alex, thank you. I am doing good and thank you very much for being so polite. Uh, my favorite sauropod, you know, there's so many of them, but I got to say... Ever since I was a kid, it was Brachiosaurus, and it still today remains Brachiosaurus. I just think he's such a cool dinosaur. Uh, that incredible stance makes him look almost majestic. He's huge. He's big. I just think Brachiosauruses are awesome. When it comes to Ice Age mammals, well, if we limit it to the Ice Age, um, wow. It's kind of hard to beat some of the woolly rhinos, which I think are awesome, but uh, geez. I, I got to tell you, it would probably be Arctotosimus, the giant short-faced bear. That guy was big and bad. He's been described as the bully of the plains, and I have no doubt he was. I just, I guess it would have to be Arctotus. I just think he's just massive, and he's really cool. All right, Andrew from Dudley, Massachusetts, dear DG. I heard that Jack Horner said that Pachycephalosaurus, Stigmaloc, and Dracorex could be the same dinosaur, but at different ages. Is it possible? Or he says, is it possible to CAT scan the skulls and see if the interior design is the same and put that theory to rest? You know, Andrew, one of the things about people that propose that these dinosaurs morph into something different, an example of that is Nanotyrannus and Tyrannosaurus rex. They are willing to also propose that the brains change shape, and in the case of Nanotyrannus, actually change position in the skull. Um, 
So even if they CAT scan these and prove that the brain cases were completely unique and different to each species, which I would, I would suppose they would be, I haven't seen the result, that won't prevent people from changing their mind. It won't solidify the deal. To me, once they CAT scanned Nanotyrannus and Tyrannosaurus rex and saw the brains were completely and absolutely distinctively different, that in itself should have stopped all debate, in my opinion, because the idea that his brain also changes shape and position in the skull, to me, doesn't have any scientific sense at all. Now, it's true that some amphibians' brains are gonna change and some insects, because their bodies are built differently and they do more from one thing into another. But um, the idea that dinosaurs did, these hard-bodied animals did to me, just that just makes no sense whatsoever. So even if they did that, I don't think it would ever put the theory to rest. I think that it's possible that that could be the case, that we do see some dimorphism as the animals grow. But to me, these, these differences are so dramatic and so distinct that I find it implausible that they are the same animal just growing into something different. I just don't see that in the animal kingdom today, and I don't think it makes any sense. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but always, let me always temper that by saying that I am not in the same position as, let's say, Dr. Horner or any of the people that are doing those studies. They have all the pieces in front of them. They're not basing their decisions off of what they've read and what they've seen over time. They have them right there in front of them. So I don't want to diminish any of the work that they're doing, and I don't want to say it's impossible. But to me, it just doesn't make scientific sense, and I don't believe it's the case. All right, uh, finally, Juan Paulo from San Pablo City, Philippines. Hi, DG. When I die and get buried, how do I increase the chances of my body being fossilized? Juan Paulo, first of all, you're a long way from that, so don't even give that any thought. And that's kind of an interesting question. Here's what would have to happen. In order for you to become fossilized, you have to be buried in the right kind of sediment. You have to go through a whole series of things that would almost be impossible to plan for. Uh, you'd have to have the right amount, uh, the right kind of minerals that would ultimately be able to penetrate your bone and then uh, convert that to stone. Um, the best way to be preserved would be to be buried in the back of a cave that never gets flooded. Um, because then you're, you have the, uh, the elements are eliminated. You don't have the sun baking bones and then making them hard and brittle and then sand and erosion causing them to turn to dust. So that would be the best thing. I've never, I don't know if you're thinking about uh, wanting to be fossilized so that a few generations from now somebody gets to find you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's an interesting question and, and uh, I don't suggest you, you plan on it today. And most importantly, it would almost be impossible to determine what you could do to be able to become a fossil because we don't clearly and absolutely always quite understand exactly the fossilization process in the first place because those things that are fossilized are a lot older than any of us, and we don't really know for certain how they got that way. All right, uh, you guys, listen. Uh, it's always great hearing from you. I love the variety of questions that they chose this time. It was actually kind of fun. Um, send me your questions if you have any. In the meantime, for you young people out there, always make sure and practice your reading. One other thing I want to tell you. I, I got an email from somebody. They, they weren't asking a question to be posted here, but they wrote to me and they said, I noticed in all your videos, you always look down. What are you looking at when I look down? I'm looking at two things, just so that you know. Number one, I'm looking at a stopwatch because I have to limit the time of these videos. So I'm looking at a stopwatch. The other thing I do is, of course, I look down to read the paper. And oftentimes, I'll look back down on it to remind myself of the name of the person that's asking the question. So uh, I'm not bored and I'm not looking away because there's nothing better to do. I'm just simply looking at a stopwatch that's telling me right now that I have about 50 more seconds to be able to talk to you. So I'm gonna keep looking down at this until those 50 seconds are gone because I don't wanna run over in time. The other way I know what time it is, is I've got, uh, in most cases, a producer or director in the room who keeps that stuff, but they're not here this week. So I'm simply looking down at my watch and I see that I now have 30 seconds to be able to talk to you. So what do you say in 30 seconds? Well, let me tell you guys the history of my life. Let's go back to the day the earth was born. It was a huge mass, a bubbling cauldron where, oh, I'm out of time. All right, you guys, listen, take care. It's great talking to you. Always practice your reading, young people. And for everybody else out there, practice your manners. Take care, and I'll see you all soon. Have a good weekend, everybody.